For its new political comedy, Veep, HBO enlisted the help of veteran political columnist Frank Rich. In this part of our interview with him, we talk about the new show. This is Media Beat. Look, things change. Anyone with a camera has a computer right. now, so you should pay attention to where they are. They evolve. So I want to start uh, first by talking about the new show Veep, mm -hmm. and I guess we could start with uh, how you got involved with the show. Sure, I um, since 2008, I've had a sort of sideline as a creative consultant at HBO, and I've been involved with a bunch of projects, and this is the first one, at least that's on the air, that I'm involved with as an executive producer. HBO had been looking for a while for a, wash, a smart Washington show, and um, when Armando Iannucci, this sort of brilliant British television mind, uh, known to many for a hit series that's still running in England called The Thick of It, made his first feature in the loop. Half of it was set in Washington. It was about the run-up to the Iraq War. And it seemed to me that that's a guy we should go after because the film was so brilliant. In fact, he was nominated for a screenplay Oscar for it. And so he came up with the idea of Veep, and then I've been involved since the beginning. It's been about 20 months, I think, since we first read uh, his proposal for it. Now, Veep is filled with a lot of uh, salty language, we'll, we'll say, and uh, a lot of really mundane doings. So uh, how much of that is really what it's like in D.C., and how much of that is, uh, you know, comedy or writing or satire? Well, I think comedy and satire uh, and farce, which is also a little bit of Veep, heightens everything. And so you can play in bigger colors, including uh, linguistic colors, shall we say. Well, that would be a betrayal from the Veep. So uh, I imagine that I would mix ape shit with bat shit, raise it to a whole new level of fury, then I'd probably rip your face off and use your eye sockets as a sex toy. <laughs> Iannucci is famous for a very profane character in The Think of It, who also recurs in In the Loop of a British governmental bureaucrat. And so it's a little bit of a trademark of his, but let's face it, this is how people talk in Washington, too. Um, I've covered Washington, obviously, and I actually long ago grew up there. Uh, a lot of Washington really is mundane. People outside of Washington, you know, they come on high school trips. They think it's all like movie sets. They think it's all like the West Wing or like a Hollywood movie in these glamorous places, the White House and the Capitol. But in fact, it's a lot of often young people jockeying for power, doing mundane jobs, trying to stab each other in the back in some cases, and often in offices that look crummy and look sloppy and there's tons of files and old newspapers and garbage. It is regular life in a way. And of course, one of the conceits of Veep is while the vice president, Selena Meyer, played by Julie Louis Dreyfus, is uh, at least hypothetically the second most powerful person in America, uh, she has almost no power, if any power. So on one hand, you're tantalizingly close to the reins of government. Other hand, you're running around trying to avoid disaster and get any tiny thing accomplished. And the ordinariness of the way people dress and so on, well, that's the way it is in Washington. You know, now that I have distance on it, go down there, as I've gone down there in later life, it's wild how far uh, behind New York uh, they are. In fact, Armando wrote a hilarious memo for production designers in the show at the very beginning saying that we should remember at all time that people dress 10 years behind New York fashion, except there's one character, Dan Egan, played by Reed Scott, who's a young go-getter. He's ahead of everyone. He's three years ahead of everyone else, which means he's still seven years behind New York. <laughs> So uh, there's actually also a character that's based on you, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the Beltway Butcher, he's called. Yes, I would Leon. say he's not, <laughs> it's a Washington Post reporter who's very uh, adversarial, and I would say the character is, is, is not really based on me, but the name uh, um, Beltway Butcher comes from the fact that I was uh, referred to, not flatteringly, when I was drama critic of the New York Times some years ago as the Butcher of Broadway, so it's a little... I guess it's a little verbal homage to that. <laughs> but you don't mind that, uh, that you've been included oh, in the show? I don't even mind being called the Butcher of Broadway, so I don't know. It's, it's, it's fun. But anyway, let people judge for themselves who know me if it resembles me at all. 